In this video, we're going to be giving you an update on some of our favourite couples from 90 Day Fiancé. Stay tuned to find out what happened to Kalani and Asuelu after the cameras stopped rolling, and the latest in the Azan and Nicole saga, including rumours Azan married his cousin and already has three kids. And remember Stephen and Olga? We'll be revealing why Olga isn't wearing her wedding ring on social media posts. But first, Paul and Karini. Paul and Karini were featured on 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 Days and 90 Day Fiancé the other way. We all remember the heartbreak they had to face on the show when they lost their baby due to miscarriage. I wish I understood what the hell was going on. Não parece que tenha nada aqui não, viu? And although they did eventually go on to have a healthy baby boy, Pierre, their relationship was extremely rocky with them constantly breaking up or threatening divorce again and again. It does not work. We've talked before. I do not want to talk anymore. But here's the thing, their story is kind of strange and unexpected. Let me fill you in, brace yourself because it gets kind of weird. So back in November 2019, Paul took to his Instagram to make the announcement that sure enough, they were filing for divorce after two years of marriage. And truthfully, it didn't really come as a huge surprise to anyone. In the announcement, he posted a video of their son playing with a toy and the caption, daddy's gonna miss you. He also polled his followers asking if a wife should divorce her husband because his mother spoils her grandchild. Interesting and perhaps a clue as to the cause of some of their drama maybe. Karini confirmed the divorce telling Us Magazine that she was looking for a lawyer. We then learned from Paul that his wife had run off with their baby to live with another man just before Christmas. But she just, just literally just took the baby. I have the car seat so I guess she just held in the seat, I don't know. But she took the baby and ran off with Blake and uh, yeah, so now I'm dealing with this right now. The other man was Blake Sakao, a local musician who was friends with the pair and who Karini had been communicating with for some time, with her husband's knowledge. For example, she'd liked almost every single post on Blake's Instagram since 2012. And it seemed like Paul was very bitter, posting on IG saying, to Pierre's soon to be stepdad, Merry Christmas, and tagging his estranged wife and Blake. But here's where things get a bit weird. I'm not sure if Paul is a modern day version of the boy who cried wolf, but it seems that the couple are still together and didn't end up divorcing. And for her part, Karini denied ever cheating on him with Blake. And get this, Karini is apparently pregnant again with their second child. We don't yet know the due date for the birth, but they confirmed that it had been kept secret for a while due to previous pregnancy complications. The couple apparently turned down TLC's offer to be in 90 Day Fiance self-quarantined because they are working on a self-produced project. I'm not sure if this is the last we'll hear about the divorce from these two, given how it seems to constantly crop up in their relationship, but I hope things work out for them. And speaking of divorce, Kalani and Asuelu. We met Kalani and Asuelu in season six. The couple became an item in Samoa while she was vacationing at the holiday resort Asuelu worked at. Asuelu was the first man Kalani had ever slept with as she'd come from a very strict Mormon upbringing. He grew up in a small fishing village and he's never left Samoa. Comes home and like feeds pigs and feeds chickens and like cracks coconuts. We just come from completely different worlds. So you can imagine the shock to her parents when she had her first child, Oliver, out of wedlock. When Asuelu came to the US, we were all very surprised that A, the wedding actually went ahead given what a man baby he was. You should have something near the, the back touch. Why? To protect me from falling down. Training wheels? You want training wheels? <laughs> <laughs> training wheels are for children. <laughs> Gosh, she's like a five-year-old. And B, Kalani's dad, one of the most intimidating men ever, didn't scare Asuelu away. Rule number one, you don't disrespect my daughter. As soon as you disrespect my daughter and my family, then you're gonna have issues. Her dad was also very vocal at the time that he didn't want his daughter marrying someone from Samoa, even though he himself is Samoan. His reasoning was that Samoan men are usually used to a slow pace of life, and he much rather his daughter married, quote, a white guy. Anyway, fast forward to today, the pair did get married and are now parents of two children. Their second child, Kennedy, who is named after Kalani's father, was born on May the 7th, 2019. But we all know that off camera, life can be less than perfect. 
Kalani recently took to Instagram to vent her frustrations, asking if wives should be expected to do absolutely everything around the house, including pay the bills. She went on to say that unless someone's amazing in bed, quote, I see no other point in raising a grown ass man that someone else didn't finish raising. Is that a clue perhaps? It definitely seems like she's throwing shade at Asuelu. I don't think it comes as a surprise to any of us that she seems to be the main breadwinner and the person doing all the household chores. So we can only assume that they have a few things to iron out, like who should do the ironing perhaps. Ladies, what do you think? Is this normal? How would you react if your partner expected you to pay the bills and do everything around the house too? Leave a comment below. Coming up, we'll be revealing what's happened to Nicole and Azan, including rumours Azan's already married. But first, Stephen and Olga. Stephen and Olga from the sixth season was a story of a summer fling and pregnancy that had us all engrossed. When Stephen flew to Russia to be there for the birth of his child, we were left wondering whether he was mature enough or ready for the challenges of being in a relationship, let alone fatherhood. If baby comes tonight, I'm not here. It's gonna be so weird. Stephen, stop. No, I, no, I don't want the baby to come. I'm not here. You told me, stop touching him. Stop touching him. You're not gonna tell me not to touch my son. He behaved like a bratty teenager a lot of the time he was in Russia. And after the birth of baby Alex, season six ended with Stephen flying back to the US, but Olga and the baby stuck in Russia because Stephen had delayed applying for the visa, something that he hid from her until way too late. Before I came here back in December, like when I said like I applied for the visa, I didn't apply for it then. However, things worked out just fine as they only had to endure one frustrating month of being apart. And then, more good news. The couple announced on Instagram that as of August the 30th, 2019, they are husband and wife. They tied the knot in a courthouse ceremony in Maryland where they have since settled. Stephen seems to have matured a lot since becoming a father, crediting yoga with his newfound patience and maturity. He recently made a level-headed response to a question about jealousy from season one's Paula Mayfield. Paula, who posted a photo of her and Russ kissing, asked, are you a jealous person? I am not. To which Stephen responded, to me, jealousy is a sign of insecurity. When you trust your partner, then it shouldn't matter who he or she talks to or hangs out with. But is everything hunky-dory? A recent Instagram photo of Olga and the adorable Alex shows her minus a wedding ring, with hawk-eyed fans quick to pick up on it. The 90 Day Fiance star gave a surprising response. Too complicated, she wrote. What's going on? Are they still together? It's hard to say just based on their Instagram posts. Stephen is rarely featured in Olga's Instagram and that comment definitely alludes to some kind of complications. But as of yet, there hasn't been any confirmation that they're not together anymore. So we can only assume that they are still together and we hope that they can work out any problems they may have. David and Annie. So what's happening with David and Annie, the couple with a 21 year age difference? As you'll probably recall, the pair met at the bar in Thailand and season five saw them get married despite David's financial woes, past infidelities and drinking problems. According to Us Weekly, Annie would like to have kids, but David laughs off the idea. He has adult children from a previous relationship and his vasectomy nips the idea in the bud. If I did have a child, we'd probably name him Jesus because I can't have children, he says. He adds that any child she has would have to be from the Amazon Prime or the pizza delivery guy while he's asleep. Jokes aside, the couple have also had to deal with racist attitudes from the public. In a 90 Day Fiancé self-quarantined episode in which the pair go to an Asian supermarket, we learn that they've actually received threatening messages because of an anti-Asian sentiment since the breakout of the coronavirus. Sometimes going out with you right now, I don't feel safe because- Because safe. That, that's why I like Asian markets, because all the Asian people here, nobody look down on each other. I know. He does seem to have her back though. He's defended her honor on social media after a user claimed that they'd had enough of Annie on Pillow Talk. Responding to the Facebook comment, he said, if you don't like Annie, that is your choice. She is the salt of the earth and most people wish that they hadn't Annie in their life. The rest just hate because she lives her best life. There you have it, chivalry personified. David also has some pretty strong views about Nicole and Azan, who we'll be talking about next. He told Us Weekly that he doesn't believe they're in love. He says, I think Nicole is barking up the wrong tree. Maybe she'll find someone else and find true love. About Azan, he says, I don't know what his story really is. I mean, I've heard rumors that he might be married to his cousin with three kids. 
Well, we've all heard those rumours, David, so let's get to it. Nicole and Azan. These two seem to have a knack for attracting drama. They've had a rocky relationship from the start with confirmed infidelity, allegations of further cheating, and claims that Azan is a scammer. In a damning 45 minute YouTube video that has since been deleted, a woman claimed to be one of Azan's many girlfriends. The video alleges that Azan doesn't have any feelings for Nicole and is only looking for a relationship that will allow him into the US. Was it true? Who knows, it has since been deleted. What we do know is there's been talk from the get go that Azan could actually be married. An alleged 90 day fiance leak claims that Azan married his cousin when he was 19. To make matters worse, Nicole apparently knew all along. In Moroccan culture, a man can have four wives, but his first must give written consent to further marriages. There are also claims that he has three kids of his own, but Nicole's mum has rushed to his defence, calling the allegations about her future son-in-law nonsense. After talking to Azen, as hard as it is, as, as difficult as I want to just yank her by the hair and pull her back onto the plane with me, I can't. I really hope Nicole's not making a mistake. There's been questions asked about the $6,000 Nicole gave to Azan to allegedly open a store in Morocco. When the store opening never happened, Nicole claimed that she'd made the whole thing up for dramatic effect. However, it appears that Nicole did indeed give him the money, but not to open a store. If a man wants to divorce a wife in Morocco, he must pay a dowry. The rumours are that Nicole was prepared to give Azan $6,000 so that he could divorce from his unhappy marriage. Now, these are all rumours and allegations, but whatever the truth is, what we do know is that during a recent visit to Morocco, Nicole was forced to extend her stay in the country after international travel was suspended due to the coronavirus. So, for the time being at least, their relationship is still very much on, but there's no signs yet as to when or if they'll be getting married and whether it will take place in Morocco or the States. If their track record is anything to go by, there's bound to be more unfolding drama. Watch this space. So over to you, what do you think? Do you think Azan is a scammer? And what about Kalani and Asuelo? Do you think husbands should expect their wives to do everything around the house and to pay the bills as well? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, check out our other 90 Day Fiance videos on screen now. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next video.